Hey everyone, welcome back to Pindy Q Podcast. This is another special episode. This time we're in Neptune, New Jersey, correct? Neptune yes. City. So uh, everyone beats me up because they said I'm in Ocean County too much, so I came into Monmouth County, so I can't get in trouble anymore. This is across nice. the border. I'm crossing the border. <laughs> and there's a train nearby, which you'll hear, which is pretty exciting. You get yeah. to hear a train every what? I think it's every 20 minutes. Every 20 minutes you're going to hear a train, so we'll probably hear that in the Bay Bay Area in, the, in a minute. I'm here with Don Calarusso, who is the owner, president here? Yes. Okay, great. At All Hands Fire uh, and Training. Fire Equipment and Training. Right. Fire Equipment and Training. And inside this beautiful facility here, which is pretty cool, this is your... Uh, this particular room is our classroom. Okay. Obviously. Tell us about <laughs> it. So, uh, yeah, we have uh, this, this classroom here. We run a wide variety of classes, anywhere from our officer development classes to uh, the classroom sessions of our hands-on. Okay. And, um, you know, we do SEVO, we do EMS, we, we do uh, training for CERT teams, we, we do a wide variety of, we can do anything here, really. That's nice. Uh, yeah. Classroom driven, so. And how many does this hold all together? The, the, uh, with the tables, it seats 25 people, okay. and if we were to remove the tables, we would have, we have an additional 25 seats, so oh, wow. 50 in total. Wow, so you can get 50 people in here. We've, we have had 50 people. That's we great. brought in some instructors. Um, we brought a, an instructor in from the New York City Fire Department to a, a classroom session elevator class. We've done man versus machine with uh, uh, Captain Mark Gregory. Great guy. So yeah, we, we, we definitely like to bring in guest instructors, and when we do that, it um, it's it's a great piece because a department to bring in some of these guys that teach at FDIC or, or these national guys, it, it can be expensive. So sure. we can do it, do it as an open enrollment. And then you know a department can extend that training dollar a little bit more and get that you know get that, that training from a guy who might have wrote a book or teaches nationally or has a great deal of experience in certain areas. Especially so. now, I mean, most of these towns now are reducing the budgets. And what do you think the first thing to go is a training budget? Right. right? So Definitely. all this stuff is getting reduced and reduced. So the fact that you're able to bring bring that you know affordability for training is huge. Right. That's a that's a big thing. Yeah, we definitely work with departments. We really try to, uh, you know, we d definitely understand it. I come from a department that, uh, you know, we, we have to work for every dollar. So, right. um, so you know that firsthand. Absolutely. Which, and which we, is we good. definitely like to extend that to people right. for, for sure. And I'm taking a look at some of these photographs you have on the wall here. I mean, this is yeah, this is pretty cool stuff, man. Yeah. So uh, we we'd like to take group sh group shots after all of our classes whenever we can, and the pictures that we have hanging in here. You know, show a, a wide, diverse collection of our experience with training. You know, we, we're in multiple states. We, um, you know, we have water training, so guys in dry suits uh, in water environments. Um, we have the CERT team, you know, which is you know not yeah. firefighters right, or, right. or police officers. I mean, just, just, if you're not familiar with the CERT team, it's all civilians. So, you know, you. you have an opportunity to show civilians what we do. Right. You know, firefighters come in and, and EMTs and police, they kind of already have a sense of that, you know, urgency and training. Right. When you have civilians coming in and now you're showing them things like the CERT team, that's a whole nother dynamic in itself. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's good that you're able to, you're very diverse in your training here, which is good. Right. And I'm looking at that one photograph right there and that's inside a, you know, inside what appears to be, what is that, a movie hall? It's a theater. It's a theater. It's a theater in Manhattan. Okay. So we did, uh, I believe we did five total uh, rope rescue classes for uh, the local, local okay. one in, in Manhattan. And uh, it was a three, a two, two day class. And um, we went to a different theater each time. And we worked with the, the state chance guys. And the, these guys are great. They, they know their theaters inside and out. And they, they work with ropes, they work with rigging all day long. So uh, we were brought in to, to kind of um, address some concerns that they had with, with guys who may get jammed up. Maybe someone's working on a catwalk and, and has a medical emergency. Right. So there could be somebody 20 feet away that can, you know, immediately render some level of aid before the New York City Fire Department arrives. So we've done uh, we've done some work with those folks, and they're they're really great people. And uh, I have actually a, a picture over there and a picture over here. So we're very proud of that those projects. And that's again we you know we talked a little bit about how unique your company is and the things you do. And that is one thing that I see. I mean you're you're doing stuff inside a theater. Did you ever think when you started this company that you'd be you know involved at the Late Show or, or in this theater here? Did you ever think that? Not at all. Uh, I was contacted by a guy by the name of Jimmy Harris. And just a really, really tremendous guy. He's from uh, he's from uh, New York, 
uh, one of the one of the towns up in New York, uh, just over the border, and uh, just like a really really super great guy. And initially, when he first contacted me, I thought he was interested in escape systems, you know, the uh, firefighter bailout systems, right. to get you know to get people down from a catwalk. Right. Or Makes whatnot. sense. Yeah. And as the conversation evolved, you know, we understood a little bit more what they wanted. Right. His theater had had the Spider-Man show. Okay. And they they had um, some challenges with that show. You know, being a lot of uh, rope heavy work, yeah, people yeah. suspended on cables and things. So um, I'm not sure exactly if that class spun out of that. Right, right. But uh, but his theater had that show and um, got, to, got to meet him and a lot of really cool guys. And yeah. like I said, these guys are top notch in their in their field. Well, I think again, that's you know, one of the cool things about what you're doing. You're really you're playing the whole field, man. You're able yeah. to see all different kinds of things, yeah. which is which is unique. And not a lot of companies are doing what you're doing. Well, we get requests, and you know, sometimes we turn them away. Sometimes, sure. it, or we'll pass them off to other people. Like a good example of that is um, Captain Mark Gregory. We talked about him yes. before, earlier. He's a friend of mine from PL Vulcan, and they have a man versus machine class. They do. A, I mean, they think he wrote, he wrote a book about it. He teaches across the country with it. I think he uh, last year he was in Japan. Wow. So uh, Mark is a super great guy. All his guys are super great guys, and like that's his program. Right. You know, so we work together. And uh, we get requests for that. Mark and I work together. We pass it off, and that's great. You know, sometimes we bring his program here as well. So uh, we get all kinds of crazy requests. That but, sounds uh, good. You know, we try to work with some people and awesome and make make it happen. But sometimes we can't. So we, you know, we try to stay within our wheelhouse. Well, that's important yeah. nowadays, especially nowadays. Yeah. Anybody who's watched my program knows that we talk about that quite a bit about you know staying in your lane. Right. So, so that's a good thing. So what what do you see for the future here for this this room? What, what kind of things would you like to see here? Well, we'd like to, um, you know, keep keep uh, opening it up to uh, the different fields within the emergency services. Um, we brought a, a few folks on that teach the EMT CEU classes. That's so, good. Yeah, um, that's good. This is a great place for that. Yeah, last year we started, uh, we, we did a few EMT classes this year. We are contracted to do maybe, I don't know, eight or ten all the way through November for, for uh, a couple of agencies. Great. And we periodically get requests to do that as well. Um, we are registered with the New Jersey Department of Health. So um, we have, I don't know, maybe a dozen classes registered for CEUs oh, that, we can, that we can offer. Everyone's looking for CEUs, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Including myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, well, here you have it. We got a chance to see the inside of the training center, which is here at All Hands. And uh, we're going to move on and see some other stuff, right? Sounds good. Yeah, right, great. Come with us. So what's this room for? So this is a, a transitional room. Okay. So we have uh, for classes that we have where there's a hands-on component to it. Okay. The students will do their classroom training. Right. When they first arrive, they'll bring their turnout gear here and, and stage their gear. They'll do the classroom session and then they'll, they'll come out here, um, get a briefing. Gear up. Maybe have lockers here. Yeah, so um, we're we're uh, we're a dealer for Groves and Ready Rack. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, Groves was gracious gracious enough to uh, provide us with these these lockers. Perfect. Yeah. And also some equipment storage, uh, mobile. Okay. Racks. So it, it it you know serves two purposes for us. It allows us to show a customer right you know right. what what they potentially may want to buy, and it, it you know obviously allows the students to yeah. put their put their gear in there. And then we have our our gear here, okay, for um, you know safety belays and uh, you know bailout systems and, and, and that kind of stuff. So they, they get taught in there, and then they get their essentials, and they come down in here, and then they get ready to go to work. Right. So that's what this room is almost like a ready room, if you will. Before we, we, we go into call it the ready room. You do? We have okay. the room ready rack for, oh, for uh, you know for the folks at Groves. Oh, so. cool. So then uh, let's go and see what's in here. Sure. Wow. So this is pretty opened up in here. Yeah, so this is a regular warehouse, and um, that door is awesome, by the way. Yeah, yeah, it's old school fire door. That's great. So when we moved in here in 2014, this was just kind of a dingy warehouse. The walls were just dark gray. The floor was regular cement. Okay. And it, it has truly evolved over you know over the years. You know, I mean, we're not funded by we're not a county fire academy or anything, right. so we're not funded through any of those things. It's all. You know, we take, we, we obviously are charging for classes. Sure. We, we reinvest a lot of money into the program. Which is, it's evident here. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the prop that we have here, this is a freestanding prop. 
It's not attached to the building at all. Okay. Um, it was built by a guy by the name of Matt Kepler and uh, Dan Parker. Okay. And uh, two really good guys. Uh, Matt, a very talented carpenter. Uh, so he did he did pretty much most of the work here on this, uh, as far as construction goes. Uh, he worked for a construction company, so yeah. it's what a good you know it's close is, to yeah. being to code structurally right. as, as it can be. Awesome. And you know, of course, uh, he's a firefighter also, so him understanding you know where the stress points are going to be, and you know for doing bailout training and things. That's yeah, invaluable. So, right? Yeah, that's really so good. Yeah. It was it was built um, with a lot of things in mind. Great. And then over the years, from from going to a lot of fire academies over the years, and you know we, we, we take the show on the road a lot. So we go to a lot of different places and see a lot of different props and academies and different ideas and all. So That's I, I always take pictures of those things and I, you know keep a catalog of those things. So when we built this, you know I was thumbing through pages of uh, ideas and you know taking somebody's idea and, and modifying it to our need and you know. A lot of good stuff out there, you know. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. The internet's got all that stuff out there. Sure. You know, Dale Peckle who's online. He does a great job. Uh, he puts a lot of those ideas out for people. So, you know, we're just trying to improve upon uh, either taking a good idea or improving upon an idea and, and and maximizing it for ourselves. Well, I like the fact that you're, you know, we're doing this right now. The fact that you're, you know, showing our guests what you have to offer here. You know, it's not, there's no secrets. I, I like that. I like that, you know, you're transparent. You want people to see what's going on here. You want people to see that there's training available. And uh, and the fact that you're, you know, giving props to those people that helped you out, uh, no pun intended, uh, is great. You know, that's really good stuff. So let's walk in and take a look sure. at the inside of this place. So if you want to look at the rails right here, uh, these rails are, are specifically constructed for our bailout training. Okay. We do a lot of bailout training, thousands of students. And uh, I mean, that's what I know you from. Right. Bailout training. Yeah. A lot, that's a lot of people know us from. Yeah. That. Yeah. We get a lot of we get around a lot of mileage on the, on, the, on the bailout systems, and we have, um, you know, kind of a reputation for for putting out that product. And so. I can't think of anything more important than that. But the students anchor to that, and they right. move horizontally. So okay. um, before anybody jumps, we do skill stations, and they got to work on those basic skills. So right. we line them up along the, the wall here, okay. and they connect to the rail, and they move horizontally, and uh, that's a really good. Um, you know, functional area for that specific operation. Great. So, uh, this building is is a multi multi use building. Okay. So, when when it was built, there was a lot of ideas put into it as far as you know max. We don't have a very big space in this warehouse. Right. We share with our landlord. So, um, you know, we wanted to maximize every every inch. So, yeah, it looks like yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, the walls are obviously painted black when we darken it down, put smoke in there. Today we had uh, our final day of our RIT operations class, so this okay. place was all smoked out. Great. Um, we had debris in here and all kinds of obstacles. Yeah, you can see the sheetrock dust. Yeah. The original walls are doing all kinds of stuff. Uh, this right here is a Denver drill prop. Yep. So this is removable, but uh, they left it in place for now because uh, I think we have another class, a fire company has hired us to do a drill night for them specifically for the Denver drill. So Great. we just leave it up and Great. we're ready to go. Uh, we have the markers here for uh, for the heat. So again, if the student's here, the instructor and the student can both visually see that if this was a, you know, a live fire environment, that you know if they're standing up, they're, they're subjecting themselves to a 1400 degree area. Here. Yeah, we all know what happens when you stand up at 1400, 1800 degrees, right? Yeah, absolutely. So um, that's, that's good though, I like the, the, those little you know, finishing touches, is, that's that's what makes it, really, that is, uh, that's smart. Yep, so the widths of the doors and, and the space between here and here, all this was done very um, specific. Right. Or we have an entanglement prop, which I'll show you. Okay. So that prop was designed to slide right in here, oh, right up to this wall, just as, again, another option, you know, in a class. So we can send a, a student through the entanglement when he, when he ends up here, he is now in a dead end area. So we can put a piece of sheetrock here, right. or we could just have him uh, reduce profile and go through the studs, or, you know, again, options, options, options. And what I like is, you know, the, the finishing touches here, like the, the things you think about, right? Like this, you have this loop here, so you can put a piece of sheetrock in here, and then they can breach that wall to get out. And, you know, this type of training is so important. And just what you're talking about, the entanglement, then coming out, and then once you get out of that entanglement, now you're here. Now what are you going to do? Right. right. You need to get yourself out of the situation. So a training facility like this, 
uh, I think back when I first started, we didn't have anything like this, right? So now that, you know, and I, I keep talking about this on my program, like, you know, the, the, what these, I say kids, but what these, these guys and girls have available to them today, this type of training is, it's, it's awesome training, right? And this is so important because when you can do this in the real deal, you're not gonna panic. Right. You're gonna at least know, hey, you know what? When I was at all hands, I was in the same situation. Let me take a deep breath, figure out what I'm gonna do, and get myself out of the situation, right? So right. That's, what, that's what's so amazing about this. Yeah. Well, and we're in a really good spot too, because I can hit a golf ball in pretty much any direction and hit a firehouse. Right. So that, this is something that these guys all have available to them, yeah. and you know, for a drill night or for a full day or you know whatever they want. We we customize a lot of classes. Um, we did a class for uh, uh, Cheesequake out in Old Bridge. Okay. You know they bought they bought a piece of equipment, and they hired us to come in and work with them to uh, to work to work with the. Uh, there were struts they bought. Oh, great! So you know we do that a lot for customers too. So, okay, that's good. Uh, but but having the facility here, yeah, this you know, is great. It think about a drill night. Right. You know, you're doing a drill in your firehouse. You can only do certain things in your. Yeah, you black out your mask. Right. You know the same the same drills. Yep. Right. So we uh, you know we have the uh, options. We have options available for a lot of different things. So. This is great. Yeah. All right, and there's an upstairs here too. Right? Yes. Yeah. So that's an example of of specifically uh, building this. Uh, building a certain way, I, I remember specifically one of the questions was, "Do you want a straight staircase?" And I'm like, "No, I want a landing." A landing, yeah, yeah, because yeah. it just gives us the opportunity to, if we're doing RIT right. or doing firefighter survival or whatever, you know, navigating around there. We can put obstacles here and, and you know have them take it down, firefighter, and, and work those challenges. And you're having a, a charge hand line up this stairwell, right? absolutely. So think yeah. about that. I mean, you know, anybody who's watching knows, you know. A charge handline versus an uncharged handline, two different animals. Yeah. So yeah. the fact that you have a landing here is good training. Yeah. You know? Good. I feel like I'm going to a haunted house. <laughs> it's funny. We, we have uh, a strobe light down there. I saw it. Yeah. And the strobe lights, I think one of the guys, one of the instructors just bought it. Just it's kind of like a... Just a distraction. distraction and you, yeah. If you if you turn it on, it's got the horn and music. Oh, does it? You know, so it's like you know, twelve dollars <laughs> at the, uh, the Halloween store, or whatever. I see. So, second floor. Perfect. Uh, we have the cutout here so that we can do the NAS drill. Um, you know, with the NAS drill, we do it with with the charged hose line. Correct. We do it with the rope. Yeah, I did that, and it was phenomenal. That that, that is a great training. Yeah. So this works out really well for us. And then again with the. Uh, you know, with the bailout stuff, we, we do a ton of that work. So we have uh, an anchor point here. Okay. And then we have another anchor point over here that's right. built, built right into the wall. So they can anchor, they come, we have two windows going at the same time. So we can we can push a lot of students through here. Oh, great. So This is great. Yeah. And then uh, we have these, these one-inch pieces of plywood here. So we hinge them up. Okay. Students do, uh, like we do ground ladder training. So they'll come up here, they'll, they'll whack that a few times. To simulate breaking out the window, they'll enter the room. We use these hooks here to pull that up. Once they hit it a few times, we'll capture it so it's out of their way. They come in to do the search and then they either head first ladder bail or whatever the scenario calls for. Okay, great. So That's awesome. That's yeah. good stuff, man. We have a guy, uh, one of our instructors, Chris Osserticki, and uh, the guy is. He, he does uh, he, he does most of the work in this in this facility right now. Okay. And uh, like he built this this uh, metal gate here. He welded this together. Yeah, it's rebar. Yeah. So uh, we do some work with that, and plus it's for the safety of the students from you know while they're waiting up here for something sitting on that ledge or what have you. Yeah, so. that makes sense. But uh, he does a lot of work up here. He notched out notched out these for uh, different evolutions right, for, so for, the, for, yeah, for the bailout. So I'll right. show you some other things he's done too. He's, he's quite a quite a master. This is good. I mean, again, it's, you know, I go back to what I said earlier. This is this is good training. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm not just saying that because your place. I mean it. Like I, I look at this place and uh, I see a lot of potential here. You know, even more than you're saying. It's, yeah. It's and we're always doing stuff too. I mean, if yeah. you look at the tape on the wall here, we're uh, we have uh, there's, a, there's a fireman in. Uh, up in the Bayshore area. Okay. He's also a uh, pipe fitter. Okay. So um, I've been talking to him. I met him. I met him actually in Jackson at the uh, seminar. Oh, right, fifty-five. Right. Right. And uh, he's wor we're working together. He's he's uh, working with me to, to uh, put a standpipe in a fire department connection and a uh, standpipe. That's awesome. So we're uh, we're really excited about that. Steam fitters are, are working with us. They're really good guys. Great. They're uh, 
So we'll hope to get those in soon. And that's what's nice. You keep adding and evolving. It's yeah. not just a stagnant situation, which is right. good. Right. All right. Well, thanks again. I appreciate you yep. showing me around. This is a great place. Yeah, thanks. All right. We're going to go look at something else, right? Yep. All right. Great. All right. So we're back downstairs. And now this is pretty cool, huh? Right. So the guy I told you about, Chris Ostrich, right. right. just right. the mad scientist with the stuff. So uh, this I, is pretty high speed. Yeah. So uh, I, I told him that. You know, we, we were getting a lot of requests for uh, firefighter survival training. Right. And some of those skills work hand in hand with the rapid intervention training. NFP 1407, which is a standard for rapid intervention, requires um, as a piece of that training to be firefighter survival pieces. So, um, like, you know, we, we should build some props. You know, we, a lot of, we get a lot of mileage out of that. Sure. With, with the classes we're doing. Sure. So, I gave him the idea. I wanted to put. Uh, a sheet of plywood as the footprint, but I wanted to be able to move it with a forklift and have them be portable and mobile around you know around the room. So this is two pieces. Okay. Uh, or actually, it's multiple pieces. This is the bottom half of it here, and then these two top walls sit on top. Okay. And then with this is a threaded rod that goes down and screws oh, in. Oh, okay. So you just so screw, screw the screw this out, out. Right. and there's two more. You pull them out, and then it all breaks down. Okay. And then to go one step further, these are inserts. So this is one challenge here. I have three of these. There's uh, a piece back here. They call it the molar because it's cut out like a molar. Okay. And then uh, like over here is another one of these. We have a slitted wall, and then we have hose that is hanging. Oh, yeah. So the great thing about these is they can be moved around. They can be butted up to each other. They can be separated. Right. They can be put up against the, the building. And we can also take these inserts out and switch them around. So, so now that, the student has a different challenge every time. Yeah, today was scenario day for the RIC class. So if okay. they wanted to, if the instructors wanted to, they could send the, inst the students through this thing six, seven, eight times. They would never go through the same uh, that's challenge that's, twice. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, that's, it's, this is so practical, you know? Yeah, yeah. Super and smart. they're easy to move around. And uh, we have two more of them over here. And uh, four, four of them total. And they're really great. They really do. They, they, fit, they fit the, you know, fit the need. And you I know. think it's important to understand that, you know, this is all all hand stuff. I mean, this is all your footprint, which is cool that, you know, it's all done in-house. Right. That That's really, really awesome. Yeah. Doing I'm very lucky house. to have some inst instructors that are, like, really into it and really want to, you know, like, Chris has built this stuff. He's, he's, he's really great. Uh, yeah. Got John Yard, Dan Harker, uh, Vinny Lazara. These guys are, uh, you know, John Tahashin, who right, we, right. we know. Yep. You know, uh, Pat Moses. Uh, you know, we have a lot, you know, Pat Buckley, we have a lot of guys that just give a lot of energy to the program. Yeah, well, a lot of effort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is good. So uh, this prop here is it's a bailout prop. Okay. Similar to this, but obviously the window is lower, and there's more area to kind of grab a student and have a lot of interaction. So if we see that a student is struggling. Yeah, it's more uh, of a one-on-one. -on -one kind we of. can pull a guy aside. Right. And really like work with him focus on maybe a technique or get over the fear of the height or, or you know whatever the issue is we can really focus the, the work here we, we always go heavy on instructors so we always have the extra people to, to do those things that's good so this is uh, this works out really well there's that train we were talking about yeah there it is there you go. Wait. so uh, this prop is brand new uh, this is this is actually a, a truss section from Summer stage in Asbury Park, yeah. where they have the summer concerts. Immediately, what I thought when I saw this was the theater. Yeah, you know, we talked about the theater earlier, and this is this is perfect. So it goes it goes along with the same model, okay. you know, and the way that we have it constructed is we can put a mannequin here, put them on on a line, and um, the student can ascend. Okay. Capture the uh, you know the, the victim, take them off their system, put them on the rescue system, and then lower them. Wow. So it just gives us more flexibility to do some different things and you know kind of take people out. I mean people get a little stale with doing the same thing all the time so you know some departments do some rope work or uh, want to do rope work so we can do a little teaser with something like this. This is pretty exciting right? Something new. It is. I'm very excited about it. We, yeah. we actually did a rope class um, uh, about a month ago and it, it, you know having this coming in at the same time it yeah. was just like kind of rejuvenated things a little bit because we hadn't done we hadn't done one of those uh, those theater classes in, in, a, in a while, like a year. So okay. Just kind of excited to get back into it again. Yeah. 
and this is good. This is real world training. This is really cool. Yeah, and that rope work is really fun. You know, yeah. it's really fun. It's good stuff. You get some people that, that don't like tying knots, like John Sahashin. Yeah. I always bust his chops because you don't like tying knots. <laughs> it's not for everybody. <laughs> and uh, I'll be the first to tell you, I'm not a big knot guy either. So I might come here and learn this. <laughs> Uh, this is our uh, this is our tangible prop here. This is obviously one of our older props. It's got a lot of mileage on it, as you can see. the uh, The cool thing about this prop is this top piece comes down and it it comes together with okay. On this yeah, you see they marry together here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And the space that's that's in here, we can take sheetrock and slide it through. Oh, if, great! If we want to make it more challenging, we right, don't have right. to. But right, it's just one more added thing that right. you can offer. Yeah, so it just, you know, we can amp the challenge up a little bit or we can just keep it nice and easy and, you know, with the, with the wiring that we put in there, we can, you know, drive it to wherever we need to drive it to. So, Don, some of our people that watch my show aren't firefighters, okay? They, they watch the show because they're so interested in what we do. So, uh, explain a little bit about this prop, and I'm, I'm very familiar with it, but explain to our viewers how important this, this particular prop could be uh, inside, like, in... Uh, a box store or inside a, an attic space or, or, or anything when you get entangled. Tell, explain what this is about. So operating operating at a commercial building or even in a residential building depending on the configuration, the drop ceilings and things, um, you know, a, a ceiling comes down mm -hmm. on top of guys and there, there's a high risk of entanglement. And getting entangled is very restrictive, you know. And stressful. You got claustrophobia kicking in, you got you're fighting against time with, with the amount of air in your cylinder. There are a lot of variables that go into it. Sure. You're calling May days, you're trying to activate um, your, your vibral or your, your, pan, your pass alarm, what have you. Yep. Um, so there's, like you said, you're amp, getting amped up and all those things. So what these props allow is, is to show certain methods, a swim method, and, you know, some, some methods to get through, navigate through, take a breath, you know, we don't allow the students to cut these, but obviously you can cut. Sure. But we want them to get through it. Right. So, um, you know, listen, we've had some students go through it and really struggle with it, and we show them the techniques and really work with them, but it's it's important training. Absolutely. Because it, uh, you know, it's, again, like you said, real world stuff. Yeah, and, and that's what I like about this facility. When I look around here and I, I walk with you, I, I'm looking at everything, and it, it is real world to me. And this, I've been through myself, not here, but I've been through this, uh, this type of training. And I can tell you, it's, you know, especially in a smoked environment where you can't see anything, they add a little bit of heat, a little bit of stress. And, you know, when you're trying to look at how much air you have in your heads up display, like how much air am I actually, do I actually have? And you know initially when this starts to happen, you start to, the panic will initially set in, but then you have to tell yourself, slow down, right. think about what you're doing and get yourself out of the situation. You know, of course, the Mayday right away, call the Mayday right away, and then try to, you know, self-extricate. But this is a great prop for that, you know, and it's good that you're able to, to do this here. Right. You know? And it doesn't have to be a drop ceiling. I mean, I've, I've gone into to, to fires over the years, and I've gotten hooked up on, like, blinds, you know, with all the wiring and the blinds. So I walk right. out, and I'm dragging blinds with oh, me yeah, and yeah. things. <laughs> and you catch that on something, you know, you yeah. could... You know, that stuff's easy to break. I, you, I laugh because I've been in those situations. You, you know, come out of the building and then people are peeling stuff off right. and running your nose on you. Right. You know, and, you know it, it's, it's true. But this yeah. is good stuff, especially for, you know, would you agree the newer firefighters that are coming on that are, you know, getting this type of training? This is where you have to really hone in your skill. Yeah, well, listen, the, the, the academies do a great job with Firefighter 1, Firefighter 2, they and do. all those they things. They do a great job. Yeah. But, you know, taking it up to the higher level, you know, in, in things and areas that, that guys can get jammed up in. Right. That's why, like, I was always a big proponent on, you know, teaching some level of rapid intervention training in, in Firefighter 1, you know. Listen, I could be in a building with another guy, and, you know, one of us could have a, 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 a medical emergency or whatever. And those few minutes, if he knows how to take my SCBA and make it into a harness and drag right. me right. out, that they could be all the difference in the world, as opposed to and you're waiting for a team anyway. grabbing me and right. pulling my gear off. You know, one of the line of duty death uh, reviews that we do in um, in our rapid intervention program is Captain Vincent Fowler from FDNY, and in, in his scenario, you know, he was in the basement. It was the Collier's Mansion. Uh, they got jammed up, and you know, they pulled him out. It was uh, you know they're grabbing gear and all those different things that happened. So. We focus on, you know, 
if we focus on those new firefighters being able to learn just basic packaging and things like that, the that stuff they can do. Such a home run, yeah, you know, huge, such huge. a home run for everybody. Yeah, so. I mean, time, time is, you know, when things go bad, they go bad like that. Right. You know, you don't, you, don't, you have very little time to react, very little time to make something happen. So right. that's good. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Well, again, thank you so much for showing me around. I'm glad you got an opportunity to see what All Hands has to offer. I mean, like I said, this is All Hands fire equipment and training. Uh, but again, the training part of this is, is the really cool part that you have to offer. And uh, I'm hoping that if you haven't had an opportunity to check check you out, you got a website, uh, we'll definitely post that on here, which is allhandsfire.com. And then again, more to see here. We'll definitely keep us posted if you get anything new, right? Absolutely. All right, thanks. Thanks All a lot, right. Tom. Thank you. All right.